this time tomorrow night, social workers will be out on the streets looking for young people out after curfew. Tomorrow is the first day the curfew will be enforced. It's Mayor Brandon Scott's attempt to stop the rise in juvenile crime we're seeing in Baltimore City and really around the state this year. Ten young lives have already been lost in Baltimore City. This is a look at just some of the victims. The youngest, just 12 years old. Others were shot and killed near their schools. Nearly 40 other young people have survived shootings this year. Our children are dying. Like, I don't see how this makes sense whatsoever. Fox 45's Maxine Stryker will give us a look at the cost of the curfew, but our team coverage begins with Keith Daniels and a ceremony honoring the young lives lost. Keith? Well, Mary, we're live outside of city school headquarters. All quiet here at this hour, but earlier today, the ringing of the bell for students caught in the city's gun violence. It's an occasion that any school official would rather avoid, an event no one wants to organize, a ceremony no one wants to attend. But outside public schools headquarters in East Baltimore, CEO Thank Dr. Sonia Santelisis read the names. Isaiah Carter, 16 years old. Nikayla Strouder, 15 years old. Jeremiah Brogdon, 17 years old. The name, age, and bell tone for each life lost, honoring the 19 students killed by gun violence in the city within the past year. The youngest student, eight years old. These young people individually represented potential. They represented different gifts and talents and personalities. They are not just numbers. For the past five years, the school district has held what's called a ceremony of peace and remembrance for victims. Deputy Mayor Dr. Letitia Jaraza, a mother representing the mayor at this year's ceremony with more deaths than any other year since the program started in 2018. That means 19 children didn't show up for dinner last night. 19 children won't get the chance to close up the school year with their classmates. This year's ceremony comes as the city copes with the disturbing trend of gun violence involving youth and what can be done about it, including expecting tougher legislation from lawmakers in Annapolis, along with the city's delegation, a point we pushed with the mayor recently. Well, Mr. Mayor, I mean, how satisfied are you with legislators? Did they well, do listen, enough? Am I completely satisfied? No, because we didn't get everything we wanted. But does that dismay me? No. We go back, we work with our partners in partnership. This One thing I won't do is call people out. But back at the ceremony, Michelle Hines, mother of 16-year-old Isaiah Carter, who was fatally shot in March, is watching and waiting for accountability. We're grieving our kids. We need to, what, what's the solutions? This year it was 19, last year it was less. Why does this happen every year? What's the real, like the real root of this issue? A mother tonight looking for answers. We're live tonight, Keith Daniels, Fox 45 News. All right, Keith, thank you. Lots of emotion at that ceremony. Well, as we mentioned, 10 juveniles have been killed in the first five months of this year. That is about half of the number of children killed in the last four years. Last month, Fox 45 News spoke with one mom who moved her son out of Baltimore City to protect him from the violence. This is getting crazy, and I, I'm recognizing that it, like the parents care more about going out to clubs, partying. I just told you my son had an Uzi. I'm not going to lie to the public. This is a crisis right now. But we want to hear from you. Do you feel Baltimore City is a safe place to raise a child? This poll just opened. So far, 100% of voters say no. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote to weigh in. Well, Mayor Brandon Scott's response to the youth violence, a summer youth engagement plan called Be More This Summer. The plan includes enforcement of the curfew, which starts tomorrow. Tonight, we're digging into how much that plan will cost taxpayers. Fox 45's Maxine Stryker continues our team coverage. Skepticism surrounding the city's new youth curfew plan is coming from all angles. It's unbelievably poorly thought out. It's not going to work because Look, the kids young people don't are going to, go to events. places. Well, no. Even city council members expressing concern it simply won't work. I want this to work, but I still see 
these young people not obeying. This is not a tool that's going to make the Baltimore City safer. This is not a tool that's going to go against the young folks who are intentionally creating uh, uh, unproductive uh, activity uh, at night. So, so I mean, I think we just have to accept that and, and literally move on. The youth curfew goes into effect tomorrow. Those under 14 need to be off the streets by 9 p.m. And youth from 14 to 17 can stay out until 11 on the weekends, 10 o'clock otherwise. Youth will be asked to leave on their own or be transported by bus to a youth connection center, of which there will be two. One here at a recreation center in Park Heights, another at a church community center. The city will supply food and games and attempt to locate their parents, but the kids can refuse to go. At the end of the day, though, if a young person decides that they are not going to go, I want to remind members of the public and members of this committee that um, the curfew ordinance does not, I mean, young people are not violating criminal code, and so we are not forcing them to go anywhere. How much does this cost you? That's a great question. I mean, it's a, an exorbitant amount of money to have all of these things open and have that many people dun, walking dun, around. Months. We reached out to the mayor's office asking the total cost associated with the Youth Connection Centers and the buses that will transport youth to them. According to the mayor's office, the summer youth engagement strategy as a whole, which also includes music and art festivals, sports and cookouts, has a budgeted price tag of $1,892, with agency employee salaries costing the most. It's a gamble with public safety, but also with taxpayer dollars. David Williams with the Taxpayers Protection Alliance says the city is taking a big chance. Here's the problem, is that these centers may staff up, uh, they may have a lot of food allocated, which is going to cost money. And if the kids don't agree to go to the centers, this is food and money that could go to waste. There is no guarantee that these services will be utilized, yet the city is going to be paying for the services. Maxine Stryker, Fox 45 News. When it comes to engagement with kids, the city has identified multiple neighborhoods where young people tend to gather. They are Fells Point, Federal Hill, and the Inner Harbor. The city referring to these areas as static locations where they will make sure officers and social workers will be prepared to engage with young people. You can find everything you need to know about the curfew on our website, foxbaltimore.com, and stay with Fox 45 News. We will have complete coverage, including the mayor's special events tomorrow as the plan goes into effect. Roaring down city streets, popping wheelies in front of our cameras, dirt bikes and ATVs, they are back. This was Tuesday, just hours after police shared success on a crackdown. Residents of Pigtown reached out to Fox 45 News saying they are not seeing those effects. Jeff Abel is live as some see the show of force as more political than practical. Jeff? There is still a lot of skepticism out here from many residents who say they've heard the promises and are still waiting on the action. Just the past couple of days, the dirt bikes have been nonstop. In Pigtown, residents have complained for months, and tonight, they're back. The nightly roar that is terrorizing the community, and officers, they say, seem less than interested. They sit there and watch them. That's why residents were stunned this week when city police announced a crackdown on illegal dirt bikes. Baltimore is not your playground you will be arrested for riding the dirt bike in Baltimore City. It's one in a string of crimes that the city is now publicly addressing. Earlier this year, City Hall established a no squeegee zones after years of complaints. And this week, City Hall rolled out a new enforcement plan aimed at getting curfew violators off the streets. So I think there's an increased sense of urgency because there's an election year next year. Political scientist John Deedy suspects the mayor's recent attack on quality of life crimes could have a lot to do with voters and the upcoming campaign season. Things can be awful for three years, but in the election year, if people feel better, they will have amnesia about the previous three years because they will look and see how are things at the moment. And that's how voters will think. It's a nightmare. But for residents in Pigtown, some too afraid to be identified, they've heard the get tough promises and are still waiting on the solution. It's all window dressing. It's just a show. It's that, you know, look what we're doing, but they're not doing anything. 
Even if these plans prove unsuccessful, Didi says it's often the appearance of action that gets voters' attention. We're live tonight. Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Jeff, thank you. Well, City State's attorney Ivan Bates also cracking down on quality of life crimes this summer with his new citation docket. Bates introduced it during a Fox 45 News town hall last month. It will focus on trespassing and lo loitering. It will also offer wraparound services for mental health concerns and drug treatment. Also opportunities for job training. The city state's attorney says the services will be offered to people as a way to divert them from the criminal justice system. But if people don't want it, they will be prosecuted. I'm Mary Bubala. Thank you for watching. Here's another video for you to watch. Also take some time to subscribe to our YouTube channel.